Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake with Redefined Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to go over some more of the annotations uh, that we're doing for this boundary survey that we did in Elk Grove. Um, I initially thought this was only going to be a couple videos, and <clears throat> I've done a lot more, a lot more with this than I thought <laughs> than I thought I was going to, which is okay. But uh, so I thought I would just keep 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 going and record another video or two, um, just so you guys. We'll be able to watch all these videos together, <clears throat> and then I might, I might uh, get a link up uh, where you guys can download the, the actual drawing files and the PDF maps for this survey, so you can you can look at those as we're, you can look at them as you're watching the video. So I'll, I'll think about doing that. So, okay, so in this video, I'm going to just go over uh, the line numbers that, that I added and show you guys how we label the monuments, and then um, we're gonna we're gonna label a couple of controlling important controlling elements or controlling calls and uh, throw on at least one angular dimension so I, I wanted to show you that and I may cover a little bit of this in some of the old, older videos but I wanted to I wanted to show you on, on this particular survey since since we've done quite a bit with this boundary on our drawing so so um, on our surveys uh, we number every single line uh, gets a gets a line tag um, we don't do line tables typically but we still give them a number and uh, I like to do that because it makes it easier when you're writing land descriptions or you're you're going back and forth with a map checker. It's easier, I think, just to have all the all the lines in the drawing um, in the survey uniquely identified. So we do that with a line number. So I always start with my subject parcel at L1, and then I typically work around my subject parcel in a clockwise direction. Uh, so you know L1, L2, L3, L4. Okay, and then when I when I get done, I just kind of work out in concentric circles. So then I start with my tie lines immediately adjacent to the subject parcel, and start and I number those all the way around, and then I just kind of work out in circles. So you know this this will be probably be the last tag here. So there's 42 individual line segments on this survey. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys how we do that. I think it's super helpful. Okay, we do something similar with our monuments. So all of our monuments get a um, get a unique uh, identifier. Um, it's either an M or a PC and uh, and they get a short description. So let me show you how to do that and and there's there's a little bit of a of a formula to follow. So we're going to uh, create a new M leader here. All right, and then I'm going to get this set up here. So this on my anno drawings at a 60 scale. So we'll that set that to a 60 scale and then my, my viewport's twisted so we need to rotate this. Okay. And then uh, we, we also want to get it on the right layer. Okay, so it's gonna go on the survey boundary text layer. Okay, so now I've got an M leader that I can use uh, for my monuments. Okay, so we're gonna start down here and I, I try not to let these leaders get super long. Okay, and we, we go to this, you won't see this line doesn't plot, it's just a wipeout. So we do a little bit of a wipeout around the actual symbol. Okay, and then uh, you have to have your search drawing open because you want to be able to get to your, your point numbers because that's what we use for the ID. Um, and for some reason I don't see them in here, which is really weird. There's 508, there's 500. Oh, I might have been looking in the wrong spot, sorry. Okay, so there's 502. Okay, so we got 502 there. So the way we, whoop, sorry, the way we identify those is uh, we use that point number. So our search points are, are 1500 series and our found points are 500 series on most jobs. So we're gonna say M502, that's the ID with a colon, and then we describe the monument. So we're gonna say found, I think this was a, a 5 8 rebar. We'll double check this. 5 8 inch. I don't use the inch symbol in my drawings. 5 8 inch rebar in monument well. And then I say per R, whatever the reference is. So this is going to be per R. I'll have, to, I'll have to get the reference per RX. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Um, and and uh, I'll probably put a line, we'll put a couple line breaks in here. Okay, and then we got to fix that justification. It should be right justified. 
Okay, and then uh, let's figure out, to get our references, we're going to actually open our sheet drawing so that we have uh, the reference, record reference table. So let me get that open. Okay, so that, this is actually uh, 104.17, so it's R4 as our reference. Okay. okay, and I actually have it open over here for you guys. Nope, I'm sorry, that's wrong, it's 204. I might have just froze up my CAD. So it's R5, sorry about that guys. Make sure you, you don't goof up your references. Okay, so R5 and that monument is this monument right here. Okay, and so you have to look, at, he doesn't label it, so you gotta go look in his legend, guys, right? So he set a, one, a two and a half inch brass disc in a, in a well casting, okay, that's a monument well, stamped RCE 2293. Okay, so um, we should have photos of all our monuments. So I like when I'm doing the labels, I like to uh, I like to double check that. So let's see if I did my job right on this. Uh, so that would be in the field folder in from crew. Uh, I'm not sure. No, not there. Is it this one? Yep, photos. All right, and so here's the photos, and the monument photos are and control photos are named with the number. So if I know my number, I can just go find the photos. So that's 502. So here's 502, and sure enough, that's what we found. All right, we found that two and a half inch brass disc in a monument well with that stamping. Okay, so you always confirm this with your photos. Don't rely on your memory like I just did. Two and a half inch <clears throat> brass disc in monument well. And then we're going to say uh, stamped RCE22993. Okay, so that first label's done. All right, I'm going to just do one more. Monument, and then we'll do a property corner so you can see what that looks like. All right, so this monument is, if we go back to our search drawing, is 503. Okay, it is also shown on this map. So it's actually this southerly monument here. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is a found three-quarter inch iron pipe with an aluminum cap. Okay, and again, we can check that. But let's go ahead and get it labeled. So we go back to our anode drawing. Okay, so this is M503. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go see if we found what, what he said he found. So 503. There I go. I got a pipe with an aluminum cap, just like he said. And there's some more pictures in there. So we usually we usually take two or three pictures. Okay, so we can say uh, found three quarter inch iron pipe with, <clears throat> I think that was a one and a half or two inch, two inch iron, not iron, aluminum, sorry, aluminum, aluminum cap. Uh, and it was stamped PLS 3646. Okay, let's make sure we got the stamping right. I don't remember if it was a PLS or an LS. Okay, looks like it was an LS. Okay, so that's why you check your photos in your notes. Okay. So that's how we, we label the monuments. We, and we don't have that many, right? There wasn't a lot set out here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five more. So not very many. And I'm not going to make you guys watch as I do all those. Okay, now let me show you how we do a property corner. So if it's a really important uh, corner in the survey, uh, it gets a PC number. 
Okay, and um, these are actually going to get numbers, so I, I will number the subject parcel first. So I got to count these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so my first PC number after that is going to be nine. Okay, and I'm actually going to start down here because I like to start my numbering closest to the parcel. Okay, so we're just going to number this. Okay, we're going to say PC9. And I just like to say no monuments searched for. So I'm just letting the other surveyors that, that are coming behind me know that um, I did not search for a monument here. Okay, now it could have been because there was no monument in the record, or it could have been because I didn't have access, or it could have been because I didn't need to for the, for the boundary resolution. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. You know, that's something you almost never see. You almost never see that on a survey, right? Almost, almost nobody tells you where they didn't look. <laughs> okay, so uh, now if it's a monument that we look for but did not find, we have a search found nothing symbol that with that we will put on it. And I don't think so. You know what? Let's see. So I did. Ha I did. I did have one or two monuments I looked for over here, um, but did not find. But I didn't show ties to them. I'm trying to think if there's any monuments down here. I don't think I have any monuments here that I look for but did not find. Um, or I would show that, that SFN symbol um, uh, with a, with just a note that said the PC number and then SFN for search found nothing. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're almost done with this part of the video. I'm not, I won't make you guys wait here as I, as I drop all these in. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you guys was just how we can label some controlling calls, important controlling calls <clears throat> from the from the deeds or the survey maps that will that we can reference in our in our narrative on the boundary resolution. So for example, here's one. So you remember we're part of this old lot five um, of this old subdivision map. Uh, so let's see, it's this R2. Okay, is that old subdivision map or lot five? And so I'm just going to go ahead and label a couple of those lines on here. So we're going to say here, we're going to say this is the east, east boundary of lot five. Also the center line of Brad Shaw Road right of way. And we're going to fix that justification. Okay, so that's just a little clue to the surveyor. Hey, that's the east boundary of lot five, right? That's super. That's a super helpful note if you're going to be retracing our survey. Okay, and so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to let everybody know, hey, this is the the north boundary of lot five, and it's also the center line of Sheldon Road right away. Okay, so that's uh, north boundary of lot five. That's the east boundary. Okay, and then guess what? Down here, this is. I got a sneeze. Sorry. <coughs> sorry about that. This is the south boundary of lot five, and um, the center line of Sandage Avenue. Now, um, you know, something else you might do is um, if you wanted, we could label this, uh, we could label the section corner here. That might be helpful. So we could uh, just copy a label over here. It's getting a little crowded over here, but we can probably get this in. So we can say, um, Section corner, let's say PLSS, PLSS section corner, common to sections 20, 21, 28, and 29. Okay, and then um, township uh, one, I'm sorry, seven north range 
six east Mount Diablo baseline and meridian. Okay. And then we can actually put a search found nothing symbol on that because I did look for something there, even though it got wiped out by the cul-de-sac. So let's see. I may not have that in my drawing yet, so let's go ahead and grab it. at we got to do some cleanup on our block library okay so here's the symbol it looks a little bit like a rounded diamond okay. and again the circle won't plot that's just a wipeout mask so we can drop that in there. When you drop that in there, you got to move your leader head out, right? <clears throat> so this this circle won't plot. Okay, so we can say that we looked at that. Now, it, sometimes it's helpful to just add a note. Um, and we can actually give this a PC number too. So for now, I'm just going to call it PCX because I don't know what PC it's going to be. And I'm just going to say SFN, okay? I'm going to say destroyed during roundabout construction. So that's a helpful note for somebody coming behind us. Okay. All right. So uh, we've labeled some controlling calls there. Um, now uh, I want to I want to show uh, the retracing surveyor that I held a couple record angles here. So I held this record angle to come up with this center line of Bradshaw, and then I held a, I held this record angle to come up with the center line of Sheldon. Why did I do that? Well, I did that because I didn't have a monument here. They smoked it in the roundabout construction. I didn't have any monuments along Sheldon for almost a mile because the city Elk Grove is coming here and paved over all the monuments. Okay, so I had to hold some record angles. So we want to annotate that. Okay, I'm going to just move this little note out of the way here. So we're going to do an angular dimension. Okay, and then what I do on these dimensions is I actually come in here and override. So we're going to go ahead, we want degrees, minutes, seconds, and we're going to drop this precision down to the nearest second. Okay. And let's see. We want, yeah. So we're, we're going to have to modify that a little bit. So the way you do that is you can come in and do that on your text override right here. So we're going to put 90, the angle is 90, percent, percent, D. Then we're going to go 0, 8 minutes, 56 seconds. So I'm going to round that. Okay, and then I also like to put at the front HRA, which is our abbreviation for held record angle. Okay, so you, you can see now we're just letting the surveyor know that we held this record angle here, right? Okay, and we're going to put that on the, on the boundary text layer too. I'm going to see if it'll let me. Uh, yeah. I'll have to check, see how that plots. I don't know if I like the way that plots. It, 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 it's making me, it wants me to pull it up. I'm trying to get it to not run into that. I tell you what, we're going to do that and then we're going to move this out of the way a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the same thing down here. So we held this record angle too. Again, this is not something you see on, on most survey maps that I think is really helpful. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do an angular dimension again. And okay, we're going to do the same thing. We'll uh, fix the precision on this. Set it to degrees, minutes, seconds. And we're going to get some more precision on our value there. Okay, and then we can hit this text override. So we've got 89 degrees, so 89 percent percent D, 57 minutes, 46 seconds, and we're going to say 
HRA, now what I should have done on the other dim is HRA per what? We're going to say HRA, this is R4. That's that parcel map that I held. Okay. And then we'll get this on the right uh, layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and put R4 on this one too. All right, sorry about that. I got a I got a little bit of a, a bug in my font display. So now I just noticed this text is too small. So it should be 0 0.10, and our scale should be 60, not 50. Okay, so we're gonna have to pull this out a little more. Oh man, it's gonna make my life hard. Let's see if. It, you know what I want? I want it to let me drag this out with a leader. I may move I may put that in with a leader. So let's uh let's match properties on that. Ah alright. So we're gonna match properties here. Okay. I just I, I'm not it's not gonna fit if I try and do that up here. So what you can do, I don't love this, but you can explode that dimension. Okay, and then you can actually uh, copy over one of your uh, multi-leaders. Like this. And then you can uh, copy this. Whoop. Copy this text and paste it in here. Okay. I don't love that it crosses that thick line, but I, you know. Oh, you know what? We can move it over here. That, that way it doesn't cross that thick line. All right. So that's a little better. Okay. So, anyways, um, this is about done. I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish up these uh, monument labels, and then uh, after that, I think this is basically finished, and uh, we're we're ready for our final exhibit for the client, and for our uh, our record of survey map.